The Eurozone crisis has eased in intensity a little bit, but there's still a host of issues to be addressed on its political reform. And then there's the question about the chronically weak state of economies, particularly in the southern part of the Eurozone. With me to discuss the issues facing the European Central Bank is Jörg Asmussen, a member of the ECB's executive board. Mr Asmussen, thank you for joining us. We've had quite extraordinary calm in markets in the past few months. Do you think this has lulled Eurozone politicians into a false sense of security when it comes to reforms? Indeed, we have seen the financial market sentiment that has very much improved over the last months. You can see this, for example, the target two balances have decreased, bank funding conditions, even the That's periphery. That's the cross-border flows, yeah. Yeah, um, even bank funding conditions have improved for peripheral banks. Uh, so the situation is relatively calm. But, but we I had these great plans for banking union, fiscal union last summer. What's happened since? Yeah, I think one should not take the calmness of markets for granted because one had identified the clear design flaws in the setup of the monetary union and we need to repair this. We need to complete the economic and monetary union. These were the four headings, banking union, fiscal union. And if we don't make progress soon on this? I wouldn't be so pessimistic. I think banking union, all elements of it should be agreed upon swiftly. This can be done without a treaty change. So we start with a single supervisory mechanism with the ECB. Then we need a resolution regime for the whole common market together with an agency who does the job and a fund who finances the job. OK, a separate issue is, of course, the whole debate about fiscal austerity in Europe. We've had some comments from the European Commission president suggesting that there's been a there may be a change in the, uh, the approach. Would you support a, a less uh, austere fiscal austerity? No, I think a sound fiscal condition is really a precondition for growth. And I think the existing framework with the Stability and Growth Pact that we have gives sufficient flexibility. But if one postpones fiscal consolidation to a later day, that comes not without risks. Because I think we have achieved a lot on fiscal consolidation and one should not unravel this. Because markets need to gain trust in countries again. They need to regain market access. So I would not completely change the strategy. But um, we have a particularly acute situation looking at the financing of small businesses in the southern Eurozone. Is there more the ECB can do to help them? I mean, there are many... There are three major elements why banks don't lend. It's first a lack of funding. Here the ECB has done quite a lot and funding is not an issue on average. Second, banks don't lend because they have a lack of capital. Here's nothing the ECB can do. It's up to private markets or if this doesn't work to governments to deal with this. And third, it's increased risk aversion why banks don't lend. All, also here the ECB cannot yeah. do anything. But you could cut interest rates. You've still got room to cut interest rates. I mean, the economic conditions are weak in the euro area, and we will look at the, the incoming data and then take a decision. But one should be aware that the effectiveness of a rate cut is limited because the monetary transmission mechanism is impaired in parts of the currency area. Which is why a lot of people are saying you should be doing things like a UK-style funding for lending scheme or buying SME debt directly. Are these things being considered at the ECB? And we are looking at all these kind of possibilities. One can dispute if funding for lending was a success or not. But I think the major reasons why banks don't lend, the lack of capital and the increased risk aversion, there's not much the ECB can do about it. I mean, we've seen a lot of action most recently by the Bank of Japan in quantitative easing. Uh, a fear here of uh, some in the city of London, at least, is that the ECB is getting behind the curve. And, for instance, the euro may is at risk of being driven even higher by the uh, actions of the Bank of Japan. Do you see it that way? No, not at all. I think we have done a lot to fulfill our mandate, which is price stability. And the structure here of financial markets are different from other parts of the world and economic problems are different from other parts of the world. So we are not copying any other central bank. We do what we think is needed to fulfill our mandate in the euro area. One final question. What lessons are you drawing from the handling of the Cyprus crisis? I mean, overall, it very clearly showed the need that we need to have all elements of the banking union in place. Mr. Asmussen, thank you very much. Thank you.